smoke had cleared away on a checkup was made on the bank, it was discovered that the bandits had stolen a $30,000 payroll and disappeared into thin air. That's a big haul, Marshal. Did they leave any clue to work on? Just this. We have the serial number of the bills. Tens and twenties. Here's the list. Well, that's something to work on. I picked you for this job, Rocky, because you're a new man in Nevada. And all the people won't have you pegged as a lawman. It's a good idea. I'll get started right away. I've got some good men on my force, Rocky. You can have your pick to help you. Well, thanks, but it's all the same to you. I have some friends down in the southern part of the state. I'll ask them to lend me a hand. And if they will, I'll guarantee we'll get the job done. All right, Rocky. You're handling it. The show can't make any money. You're your own best customer. Well, daughter, I have to take a little of my medicine to prove the spirit of it. Yes, but you don't have to bathe in it. Oh, Abby, don't be like your mother used to be. I don't care. I'm so tired of sneaking out of town and having you beat hotel bills, running out without paying any of our debts. Maybe we haven't skipped out of a town in over a year. There goes that deadbeat. Let's get him before he gets over the state line. That looks like the sheriff from Willow Springs to me. He does resemble him, actually. And he seems to be trying to overtake us. I believe you're right. You know, the state line is just down the road a little piece. If we get across that, the sheriff can't touch us. Looks like it, he is in trouble. Shall we lend him a hand? Sure thing. Lend him both hands while you're at it. Oh, look, look! Oh, so near and yet so far! Are you in trouble? I sure am. Uh, plenty. You want us to pull you over the hill? I sure do. Good as done, then, Eddie. It's done. Get up, give her all she's got. You looking for somebody? Yeah, we're trying to stop a gas buggy. It stopped around the bend. But the people went over that ridge. Thanks, Shorty. It worked. It sure did. Let's get out of here before they come back. <laughs> And tricked. There we go. Come on, man. Line. 
and you came cross it. <laughs> You'll never beat another hotel bill here. Because if you ever come back into the state, I'll throw you in jail for life. If I ever come back into your state, I'll welcome jail for life. And I'll throw you birds in jail for helping a criminal escape. Come on, then. Looks like we helped the wrong bird. Yeah. No use worrying about it now. Oh, he can't be too bad. That's a mighty pretty girl with him. Uh-uh. There he goes again. Hush, Elmer. Let's have a talk with him to find out what it's all about. Well, that's about it. I lost my talent. When my talent left me, I didn't have a show. And when I don't have a show, I can't sell my medicine. And if I don't sell my medicine, I don't eat. And when I don't eat, I guess it was digestion. <laughs> and I have to take my own medicine. <laughs> ah, that's good. <laughs> well, you see how it is, don't you? Yeah, you're in a mighty bad way, Pop. <laughs> but we'll see what we can do towards helping you out. In the meantime, Max, you see what you can do towards getting this benzene buggy operating. I'll ride down the flats to try to meet Rocky Cameron. Okay, Ken. So long, Pop. Hurry back! Hi, boy. You know, Miss Ann, all my life I've wanted to join up with the show. Well, what kept you from it? His ability. <laughs> now, Elmer, give Eddie a chance. Oh, uh, who is? <laughs> Say, I could make a lot of money with that little lumbry. <laughs> well, I'll talk it over with him, Pop. He generally does what I say. Do it. <laughs> 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 Send for you fellas. We've got some bad news for you. What's wrong? I can't get rid of that stolen money the way I figured. Oh, why not? Ran on to a little information at the sheriff's office. The U.S. Marshal has put his ace man on our trail, and he traced us here. Yeah, who is he? His name is Rocky Cameron. Any of you fellas know him? Not me. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. Well, neither do I. They say he's a scrappy sort of a fellow, always looking for trouble. In one way, you'll be sure to know him. He always rides a white horse. Then you want us to get rid of him so you can go through with your deal, huh? That's right. And make a good job of it. said he'd be riding a white horse.
Rocky. Howdy, Ken. Man, I'm sure glad to see you. You keep your appointments right on time. I almost missed that one. Bunch of roughnecks jumped me back there. Hey, I got the idea. I've got the answer. Answer to what? Why they jumped me. You're riding a white horse and I am too. Now, they were laying for you, Rocky. Well, I'm glad they saw you first. Say, I must be getting on the trail. Let's pick them up. Wait. I like to talk to those birds. Wait a minute, not so fast. Before you get me in action, I'd like to know a little bit more about what the score is. Oh, yeah. You should know that. Where's Max and Eddie? They're not so far. Come on, I'll take you to them. It's getting pretty bad when the four of you can't handle one man. Sorrell, that man's as fast as light. And a mighty good shot, too. Well, you'll be heading back into town. So keep your eyes open. When he does, let me know. I'll handle him myself. You know, Pop, I think your engine's missing a little. By the time you get through with it, it'll be missing, period. Quiet, Elmer. I like that echo. So do I. Hello there. Hello there. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Eddie's fixing to steal your daughter, Pop. Well, that'll take some fixing. Hey, Charlie? Elmer's the name. Mortimer. Mortimer? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Ooh, I'm singing all the day, just riding along down Harmony Trail. Ooh, ooh, I'm happy all the day. Just me and my song Down Harmony Trail I got no gal to wait for me Till my roaming days are through But the trail is wide My heart is free And the skies are always blue Ooh. I'm singing all just riding along down Harmony Trail. Ooh. Ooh. Hello there. Hello there. What are you doing? What's it to you? <laughs> <laughs> Again, Rocky. Hi, Rocky. Hi, Hi, Savior. Rocky, it looks to me like the men who jumped Ken today are the men you're at. Sure, mistaken identity. Somebody tipped them off and we're coming. Well, in that case, we're going to have to work undercover. I got an idea. Why don't we join this medicine show? That'll give us a good excuse to hang around Red Bluff. And if any of that stolen money are floating around, it'll show up mighty quick. So you won't be the town target, Rocky. You're ditching that white horse. What about your white horse, Ken? They already suspicion you. I'll satisfy him. I'm not the law. This sort of work great, because Pop's needing some talent. And he'll still be needing it. Quiet, Elmer. <laughs> <laughs> now, with us planted with this show, that accounts for our being in town, Savvy. All I'm telling you to do is to keep that bank covered. I've given you the serial numbers of the stolen money. If any of it shows up, you notify me at once. All right, Marshal Cameron. I'll do exactly as you are, and work with you to the best of my ability. But tell me something. What makes you think these bandits are working in my territory? Oh, there's many reasons, Sheriff. The main one is, this town is wide open. It's a natural haven for outlaws. Well, I guess I'd better sweep out these sails. Well, you're a little optimistic. 
But I'll be seeing you. Hey, Sorrell. We were just coming to get you. He's here. Fine. Now, you let me handle things. Where is he? Right the edge of town. They got some funny kind of a wagon. Yeah? Come on. What is your name, anyhow? Just call me Kim. All right, Kim. Come on, bring it right in here. There you are, Kim. Come on, Kim. We ain't got to get going and settle some of this stuff. Howdy. Howdy. I sort of run things around here in Red Bluff. I was just wondering what you folks are up to. Oh, we're show folks, mister. Uh, my boss, Dr. Martin, here has a very fine line of medicine. I'm sure your town's folks will enjoy the show. I see. Now, just what do you do? I'm a sharpshooter. Oh. Since uh, questions seem to be in order, I'd like to ask you one. All right, go ahead. Why did these birds crack down on me in the hills? Well, I was just coming to that. You see, my boys mistook you for a troublemaker they've been looking for. And you didn't wait around for an explanation. If he'd have waited, he wouldn't have needed an explanation. He'd have needed an undertaker. What's that thing? Well, this is not a thing. This is Elmer Sneezeweed. Elmer, meet the gentleman. Hi, Stinky. Shh, Elmer. Well, I hope there's no hard feelings. It won't be, as long as it don't happen again. I'm satisfied he ain't the law, Surreal. That tip you got on Rocky Cameron must have been a false one. I'm for getting rid of that money right now. Well, maybe you're right. I'll get a hold of Hodges and close the deal. But I'm still afraid of that bird with the white horse. Oh, forget about him. He's only a sharpshooter. That's what I'm afraid of. Oh. Well, I see you made it. You also made a goodbye, Mr. Hodges. 500 head of cattle at $50 a head. That's plenty cheap. I appreciate that, Mr. Sorrell. It was a good buy. But for the life of me, I can't see why you insisted on cash. Well, that was our bargain. Oh, I'm not complaining. But $25,000 cash, that was a pretty tough job. Yeah. I reckon it was. Oh, hey, hey. Right this way, right this way. Gather round, you're all welcome. Welcome to the biggest little show on earth. Presented for your entertainment and your entertainment only. It's all free, it's all free. Step right up. Now, folks, gather round and allow me to give you a brief analytical and biological resume of the remarkable merits and medicinal contents of Martin's Miracle Medicine. The ingredients of this rejuvenating, invigorating, and vitalizing compound are permeated with and composed of concentrated double distilled essence and extract of roots, earth, quartz, and berries gathered from the four corners of the earth. After profound collaboration and years of hygienic and scientific research, Dr. Martin has presented and perfected this remedy. You know, Eddie, it's really grand of you boys to help us out this way. It all comes out of the head of official business, Miss Ann. Besides, I like it. <laughs> oh, boy, we ought to do all right today, huh? <laughs> Take it easy, Pop. We're trying to sell that stuff. <laughs> I hope they buy Pop's medicine. Some of that money we're looking for might show up. If he don't sell it, he's going to have a mighty big hangover in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> if you have palpitation, hyperacidity, rheumatism, arthritis, gout, diabetes, or fallen arches, my friends, if you have thyroid gladular trouble, if you have calluses, corn, bunions, ingrown toenails, if you have stomach, gall, liver, kidney trouble, earache, toothache, dyspepsia, or dandruff, it will take spots off your clothes. It'll take spots from in front of your eyes. It not only grooms, but it grows hair. It is good. <coughs> it's good for public. <coughs> it's good for public.
It is good for public speakers. Now, friends, if you have an excruciating pain in the neck, no, I didn't say mother-in-law. Oh, you have them both. Yeah, well, come right up and we'll do a little demonstration here, my friend. <laughs> right up here. <laughs> Let's see here. I've had it for four months. Oh, you've had it for four months. Well, all right. Here, I'll show you a demonstration. You'll remember as long as you live. Oh. <laughs> How does it feel now? Confidentially rotten. <laughs> oh, that's what they all say. The greatest discovery in America. I didn't say you that. You said it plenty, my friend. You said more than if you'd write an encyclopedia of testimonials. The greatest discovery since Columbus discovered America. Anybody else got any aches, pains, or ailments? Is that any good for a cut finger? Good for cuts, scalds, burns, or bruises. Uh, now, folks, I don't want you to think that we've got any plants in the crowd. I want you, I never saw you before in my life, did I, my friend? Oh, sir. What a whopper. Watch this demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, my friend, all well again. Now, folks, I don't blame you for scrambling for your pocketbook, but don't crowd and don't try to buy this because I cannot sell you one single bottle until you receive the entertainment you so justly deserve. Now, uh, my friend, will you help set the stage for the next act I'm about to introduce? You bet, sir, you bet. Sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I take great pleasure in introducing to you a man not only known from coast to coast and boundary line to boundary line, but known internationally as that peerless exponent of the dexterous art of rope spinning. A regular fella, a he-man, the one and only Ken Maynard. $25,000 of this money on Hodges. But my plan makes it perfectly safe for us unless some of the rest of it shows up. That is, at least for a while. Now, don't try to pass this until I give you the word. You understand? Yeah, we understand. Yeah, but when do we get our split of that $25,000? Just as soon as we're in the clear and they've hooked Hodges. Oh. Hey. Hey, we're missing something. That medicine show is going on. Let's get down there. for a marvelous exhibition of shooting. The supreme marksman, the champion sharpshooter of the West, assisted by the doctor's lovely little daughter, Miss San Martin. All right, Ken.
I'd hate to have that bird shooting at me. He never misses. You're telling me. Yeah. Now I want to interview an old boy I've known a long time. There's nothing I wouldn't do for him, and there's nothing that he wouldn't do for me. And that's the way they go through life, doing nothing for each other. Oh, shut up, Elmer. Now that sweet singer of songs, that silver-voiced baritone, Eddie Dean. Somewhere west of Pinkus, there's a cowboy that's hip. He used to be a Nicky without any pep. Singing mighty sadly of his home on the range. Now he does it boogie-woogie, and man, what a change. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam, where the deer and the antelope play all the day. Where seldom is heard a discouraging word. Shoot the halter to me, Walter, my boy. He used to herd the cattle and plonk his guitar. Cause he never heard about a late to the bar he Went on down to Memphis and got on the beat Now his horse is prancing with boogie woogie feet Clippity clap clap, clippity clap clap His old pedal's alive, then he jumps to the jive Clippity clap clap, clippity clap clap Shoot the winny to me Benny my boy Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Hey, I'll take a bottle of that, mister. Isn't that good judgment on your part? Oh, uh, <laughs> One dollar, please. Ooh, ten dollar bill. He's a boogie-woogie artist on the wagon show now. Drawing down a thousand per for showing them how. If he lost his pen, oh, he'd be knocked off his feet. Cause he's gotta have him with him to give him the beat. Ho, ho, clippity clap clap, clippity clap clap. He's a killer, is true, when the jamming to do. Clippity clap clap, clippity clap clap. He's an eight beat puncher on the wagon show now. Shoot the ranger to me, silver, my boy. Think hard, Pop. Who give you this bill? Well, if you could only remember, it'd mean an awful lot to us. Did you get it while Eddie was singing? Was oh. it a tall person or a short person? I've got it. I've got it. Yeah? yeah? It was a little one. Yeah? A little? Short? Yeah? Yeah? Fat? Yeah? Woman. Oh, oh what a memory. What a memory. Oh, close it. Marshal, can I talk to you? Private like? It's all right, Sheriff. You can talk in front of my friends. They're all in on this. Part of the stolen money has shown up. $25,000 of it. Where is it? In the town bank. What's it done in the bank? It's been deposited there. By whom? Jim Sorrell, the cattle dealer, and a mighty big man to be meddling with stolen money. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's throw Sorrell in jail. Wait a minute, not so fast, Rocky. Not gonna be as easy as all that. How come? Sorrell's too smart to make a blunder like that. There's a game being played here someplace, and we got to find out what it is. Ken, you've got something there. Rocky, it's time to be yourself. We're going to see Sorrell and do some talking. Come on. Max, how about getting the horses ready? We might need them. OK. Looks like we about to make an arrest. Where do you get that wee stuff? Elmer, don't do that. That's the sheriff. He's going to track them down. He couldn't track an elephant in five feet of snow. Sorrell, we just come from the bank. We have proof that you deposited $25,000 to your account. Since when was it wrong to put money in the bank? Not a thing, but in this case, it happens to be stolen money. Well, just who do you happen to be? He happens to be Rocky Cameron, U.S. Marshal. Well, gentlemen, if that money was stolen, I find myself a very injured person. Meaning what? Well, the stolen money, as you call it, was paid to me by Jeff Hodges for a herd of cattle that I delivered to him. 
My boys here witnessed the transaction. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hodges is the man you want. And if that money is stolen, I've been tricked. And I demand my cattle back. Well, you're entitled to them. We'll go after Hodges right away. It won't take long to clean this thing up. Fine. As United States Marshal, I'm ordering you men not to leave town till I tell you. You'll be wanted as witnesses. Make no mistakes this time. Be on your toes now, Max. We'll be back as soon as we get Hodges. All right, Ken. You'll find him out at his camp. Thanks, Sheriff. What time's the next show start, Pop? Just as soon as you get back. We have to go through that again. Oh. Kind of quiet around here. Yeah, a little bit too quiet to suit me. Hey, look. Must be in that shack. I guess we'll have to take him. Come on. Your hands up. You unarmed? Sure. Gosh, Mr. Hodges. We made a mistake. We thought we were dealing with a desperate character. Say, what is this, a joke? The law don't play jokes, Mr. Hodges. Did you buy some cattle from Jim Sorrell? Yes, 500 head. Paid him cash, too. Why? Is there anything wrong? Funny. Where did you get the cash? Well, it was a pretty big job. I had all my friends in the country trying to dig it up for me. You see, Sorrell insisted it had to be in tens and twenties. Now we're getting somewhere, Hodges. Wait here till they leave Hodges, then we'll get him. That's Tarzan, Eddie. Something's up. See what's the matter. Sorrell's men are out there. This must be a trap. Well, we'll soon find out. Hold it, Rocky. We can't win the gunfight. We we'll got a lot of work to do. Mr. Hodges, for your own safety, we're arresting you. Say, will someone tell me what this is all about? Take him to town and lock him up, Eddie. They can't make it with them there. We'll draw them off. Can we get out that way, Hodges? Sure. Come on, Rocky. Funny going on down there. They're getting away. Let's get. Let's put up. I'll see you later, Rocky. Thank you. 
you get here. I got him all right. Where's your man? I got away. Come on, we gotta get to Sorrel quick. Sending 
the thought of his always been here. I'm watching and waiting here still, and someday I may see you come drifting to me on your got a million dollar voice. I could get voices like that for a dime a dozen. Oh, yeah? Hey, Shelby, you're jealous, Eddie. I thought you'd never get here. Where's Hodges? Safe in jail. What's our next move? I believe Hodges' story all right, but there's a few more questions I want to ask him, and then we can start making an arrest. I'm sure he'll work with you. Talk with the Hodges will give us the answer. Papa, to help a whole lot if you could just remember who passed you that ten dollar bill. Well, I guess you won't be asking him any more questions. Of it, Ken. It looks like a plain case of suicide to me. Hodges knew that you had the goods on him, so he took that way out. You're wrong, Mrs. Sorrell. Hodges was murdered. Murdered? Yes. Hodges couldn't kill himself. He was shot in the head. And he fired the shot at such close range that it had been powder burns on his skin. There was none. The bullet that ended Hodges' life was a 30-30. I picked it out of the wall. The gun planted by him was a 45. How could it happen? The door was locked and no one had broken in. He was shot through the window. The gun thrown in beside him to make it look like suicide. I think I got it. You do? Say, what was that fellow, that slim fellow with a checkered shirt? What was his? What Bronco? Was... Bronco, that's the fellow. Sorrell's man. Are you sure? I'm dead sure. Well, come on, then. You make a pretty smart detective for a sharpshooter. Can you tell us who did it? I think so. As soon as I find out who has the balance of that stolen money. Hey, Ken, where are you? Where are you? <laughs> What's the matter? He remembers. Well, come on out with it. Now, good news. We got our evidence. Pop remembers who passed him that stolen ten spot. Yeah. It was one of Sorrell's men. That was the one they call Bronco. Hold it. All of you. I'm taking 20 minutes to get out of town. You're covered from the outside. The first man through this door gets blasted. Why that dirty? Stay away from that door, Eddie. He meant what he said. Well, what do we do? Stay here for a stall. I know his next move. Get across the street and cover the sheriff's office. Get them if they start to come out. I'll get the money and the horses.
I'll take that money, Maynard. You sure work fast, sharpshooter. You work fast, too, Mr. Sorrell. Keeping Hodges' good money here, depositing that stolen money in the bank to throw the blame on him. You might have got away with it, too, if Bronco hadn't showed your hand by passing that $10 note. Stay away from that door, Pop. You see anybody out there? No, but you can bet your life we're covered. Well, I'm worried. I'm worried about Amy. Well, I'm worried about Elmer. Sharpshooter. Well, folks, now that our job is finished, I guess we'll be on our way. You were certainly a great help. You fellas sure was a great help to me. And if our trails ever cross again, you can always work for Martin's Miracle Medicine Show. So long, Miss Ann. Enjoyed working the show. I enjoyed it, too. Bye. Snap out of it. <laughs>